Hi everyone, James here, back with another look inside the box. This is the Airfix 170 second scale, the Havland Vampire Trainer 11. On the front, a very nice box art of the aircraft. On to the left, there is two schemes to do, and then along the, the edges is a brief history of the aircraft. Two schemes and what uh, what they've flown by and where they're based, the uh, suggested paints, and then again brief history in several languages, decals by cartograph, and then the box art and the the aircraft name. An FX logo along the two sides. So opening the box you have the sprue sheet, which is three of them, with a separately bagged canopy clear parts. The instructions and then the decal sheet also. As we usually do, we start off with the plastic parts. This is the first sprue with the fuselage halves, the front section. A cockpit piece, the front wheel well bay, lower wing halves and the twin fuselage rear section. Some really very nice detail. Recess panel lines, there is no flash that I can see. It's the rear, there is some interior cockpit detailing, which is nice. Close up now of the detail. As you can see, it's quite nice. To the second sheet you have two pilots, the two halves of the rear fuselage, I'm going to say twin pylon, I'm not sure what you would call them, some engine parts, the auxiliary fuel tanks and the, the rear landing gear wheels. Also, there's an instrument panel there too. It's the back. There is some detail for the, the bay doors. And again, the close up. Two pilot figures. The last sprue sheet for the simile of the aircraft itself is the top half of the wing some more landing gear doors you have the tips of the rear fin both sides some more engine detail the main landing gear legs the seats for the pilots some intake surrounds some more instrument detail and then the front tail wheel there also with some various other parts 
to a symbol. Again, there's no flash, but there is some sink marks on the top of the wing. I'll show those in a minute. Have a close up again, full detail. The inner side, some nice wheel well detail also. As you can see here, and there's a bit there, and then here, and then two bits here also. It's where the I think the the flap area and the wheel well bit is here, and then again on this side there is sink marks where they are. Apart from that, there's free from flash, it's all crisp and clear. Moving on to the clear parts for the canopy. It's crisp, it's clean, it's clear. There is no marks. I thought there was one here, it goes across. But I'm sure that's the detail. There's no scratches or anything. The uh, canopy framework is raised slightly so you could mask off yourself, which I will be doing as I don't have any masks. That's the clear parts. Moving on to the decals, there is a fair amount of the common data, the two schemes I mentioned before you could do. It's clear, it's in good register, there's no uh, misalignment of the roundels. You often get, when it's misaligned, the, the white line around where it hasn't lined up properly with each colour. They're readable in a sort of matte finish, They're quite thin also, there's no marks. I'll take you around the sheet for a close up, there is some very nice detail to the instrument decal itself. That's the decals. Moving on to the instructions on the front, there is a brief history of the aircraft in English and four other languages. Opening that up, you have assembly instructions, again, English and several more languages. And down the bottom you have the assembly icon symbols. And as usual, steps one is the cockpit. Followed by steps two and three, painting the two pilot figures and then placing them into their correct seats. Steps four, five and six is applying the decal to the instrument panel and adding a couple of uh, 
parts and then gluing that again to the cockpit. Seven and eight is sealing the fuselage half up with the cockpit section also. There is an option to drill the bottom holes here for the airfix stand if you wanted to. Steps nine is adding the I believe the air scoops for the engines. And then there's a a blown up diagram here to indicate the correct position I'm guessing. Moving over to 10 and 11 is adding the top half of the wings. And then adding the the rear section of the fuselage, gluing those two halves together, each one. 12 and 13 is this time adding the lower halves of the wings. And again there's an option here to if you wanted to add the external fuel tanks. 14 and 15 is the option if you wanted the landing gear up or down. Step 16 and 17 is again more question marks whether you wanted to leave off the fuel tanks or add them and then again you could have the cockpit open or closed and as I said there's two options you could do WZ507 flying by the Vampire Preservation Group, Northweald, Essex, England, that's 2012. And then the second option is WZ590, number 5, Flying Training School, Royal Air Force, Oakington, Cambridgeshire, England, March 1962, with the silver and the day glow orange. This has been the Airfix 172nd scale de Havilland Vampire T11. Thanks for watching.